Throughout history, any part of the world where there was an empire or a powerhouse form, they would have a flag that went along with it. It usually wasn't the flag we have today, but it was a sort of symbol that represented that empire. In this video, we want to go through history and look at the interesting past of different countries' flags. Let's start in South America, the country of Brazil. You most likely know, but Brazil was a part of the Portuguese kingdom. So it was under Portugal until the 19th century. The first government of Brazil formed in the year 1870 and they named it Empire of Brazil. And this was the very first flag. It's good to know that Uruguay was also under the Brazilian Empire. The Brazilian Empire lasts for 77 years and it turns into the Republic of Brazil. And Uruguay was not part of the Republic anymore. The first flag of the Brazilian Republic was this. And you could say it's kind of copied of the United States. The people seemed to not like this flag whatsoever. So they quickly changed it to this, the iconic flag you know today. If you read in the middle of the flag, it says Ordem e Progresso, which means order and progress in English. Let's go to another giant country, India. Even though India has a long history, but the entire subcontinent that was India never had a proper flag that was united. Each section had their own type of flag or symbols. The first official flag of the entire subcontinent plus Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and other countries was actually the British flag because they took over. But a lot of people didn't like that and the British flag turned it to this. It stayed like this for 67 years until the year 1947 when India finally gained its independence and changed its flag. The first flag they proposed was designed by Gandhi and it looks like this. The thing in the middle is called the charcha, which is a spinning wheel you see right here. The reason that this design was chosen, that it means there is life in movement and death in stagnation. But soon after, the flag was simplified and it looked like this, which remains to this day. All right, let's go to another popular country, Germany. If you know anything about the Holy Roman Empire, this is basically the beginning of Germany. It started with the holy country and this was its flag. It's interesting to know that the eagle you see on the Holy Roman Empire flag is the same one you see on the modern flag, the coat of arm of Germany. And even though you don't see it on the normal flag, it's still the coat of arms of the country. Everybody knows the modern flag of Germany, but this is not modern whatsoever. This was first put in after Napoleon defeated the Holy Roman Empire and this flag was chosen to represent Germany. Then Germany becomes a part of Prussia. Prussia itself is considered another empire of Germany and this is its flag. Prussia was considered German but it wasn't unified until you get to the year 1871 when Otto von Bismarck, one of the most famous people in German history, unites all of Germany together and makes it the German Empire. And this was the flag of the German Empire. This was the first time where Germany was officially inserted into its name. The flag stays until the end of World War I, when the Germans are defeated, and the flag once again changes to the old flag, the modern flag you see today. And the name didn't stay the German Empire anymore. It became the Weimar Republic. But the name the German government called themselves was the German Reich. 14 years passes and a man gets into power named Adolf Hitler. And he designs a flag for Nazi Germany because he didn't want to put the German Empire flag anymore. And he thought this represented the Nazi regime better. 
Twelve years later, the Germans lose World War II once again, and the flag of the country changes back to the original one, which remains to this day. Let's talk about another well-known country, China. China is somewhat like India in this term, even though there has been dynasties that have been here for many centuries, but they never had an official flag that was unified altogether. The first official Chinese flag is from the Qing Dynasty in the year 1862, and it's this. In the year 1912, the Qing Dynasty is over, and it becomes the Republic of China and this becomes the flag. Fast forward to 1928, and they changed the flag of the Republic of China to this, which is still the same flag as Taiwan. When Mao took over China and made it a communist country, they changed the flag to the flag you see today, the red flag. But Taiwan didn't want to be a communist nation, and they kept the Republic flag. Yes, Taiwan's original name is the Republic of China still. You might ask, didn't Mao have all that power? Why didn't he just take over Taiwan and make it part of China? The reason was he didn't want any problems with the West because he knew they were going to intervene. And at that time, Taiwan was nowhere near as important as it is today. That's why, in modern times, you hear a lot more about Taiwan and how important it is to the world. Alright, let's go to the Korean Peninsula that was always united through history, but now it's in two pieces. Before the peninsula was separated, this was the official flag of Korea. But once they separated, South Korea modified the old flag and North Korea designed a new communist style flag that looks like this. So yes, the South Korean flag that you know that looks like a Pepsi logo is somewhat the original design of Korea. Let's go to the Middle East, a country that has been around for 2500 years and it has had a flag for that long. The flag you're seeing is the standard of Cyrus the Great or the Achaemenid Persian Empire flag, and some even call it the Shah Baz. When you go forward, the Persian Empire enters the Parthian era, and this is the flag. And after the Parthian era, one of the most famous flags of the Persian Empire is seen, the Darafsha Kaviani. If you study history, it is written that Darafsha Kaviani and the Roman Legion are the oldest flag that actually represented an empire. The Persians and the Romans fought against one another for about 700 years, and for the last four centuries of that, the Darafsha Kaviani was on one side, and the Roman Legion was on the other. After the Islam conquest of Iran, pretty much what you're seeing all became Muslim. And when you fast forward about 900 years and you get to the year 1501, Ismail I brings the name of Iran back to life. Ismail I's son, Tahmas, changes the flag and puts a goat and a son in the middle. And his son, Ismail II, changes it to a lion and son. The Lion and the Sun stay on the flag of Iran until the end of the Safavid era, and then Nader Shah takes power. Under Nader Shah, the flag looked like this, which somewhat resembles the Netherlands flag. But at this time, the Netherlands did not have this flag. Theirs was much more orange like this. When Karim Khan takes power, he brings the Lion and the Sun back and makes the flag this. When Agha Muhammad Khan Ghajar takes power, this becomes the Iranian flag. Fatali Shah turns it green and adds a sword to it. Muhammad Shah turns the background white. When you fast forward time, you get to Amir Kabir or Amir the Great, and he was the first person to suggest to use the iconic tricolor flag in Iran, the green, white, and red. 
After a few years, then make the tricolors thicker to match one another. When Reza Shah comes into power, some small changes were made, but the original design stayed. When Iran goes through revolution in 1979, they decide to change the flag once again. This was the first concept they came up with, but quickly they changed it to this, which still remains to this day.